Hello, my name's Paul Mendez and I'm the author of Rainbow Milk, which is um, it's my debut novel and it's being published by Dialogue Books on the 23rd of April. Um, it puts together um, narratives from three generations of the same black British family, uh, starting in 1959 with Norman, a Jamaican immigrant. Um, he's got two small children, um, but unfortunately he's come upon um, unexpected disability and um, racism and he's telling us all about his hopes and fears, particularly for his children. He then passes the narrative baton on to Jesse, who's a 19-year-old boy uh, from the black country, who's moved to London to escape familial and religious persecution based on his sexuality. And we catch up with him in London about three months after he's moved, um, and he is making money the only way he can and making a living, but I think this text that I've chosen to read will tell you a little bit about his background as well and what his hopes and fears are too. August 2nd, 2002. He got off the 35 at Brixton Station and waited at the same stop for the number three. Two evangelists, both mic'd up, competed with each other over dub bass lines at the station's mouth. Facing it, a bespectacled, middle-aged man in a white shirt and high-waisted black trousers sent the words sex before marriage into his headset. Closer to Jesse, accompanied by a wheeled amp, a woman dressed completely in white from her synthetic hair to her Doc Martin boots was screaming, Jesus died for you, into her mic, pointing right into the faces of startled passers-by. A group of black girls with iron straight weaves, crop tops and combats passed her in silence with their lips around McDonald's straws. Crowds of people dressed in leather, skinny black denim and band t-shirts, some carrying pint glasses and bottles, were dispersing onto buses and into takeaways. A police car waited until it crept into Jesse's personal space before deploying its siren, making him jump and swear before it escaped through the traffic. Men with dreadlocks stuffed into yellow, red and green knitted hats sold posters of black legends and incense from trestle tables. The smells of skunk, southern fried chicken, raw meat, fresh fish, green banana and yams commingled in the cooling air while debris from the day's market trade littered the gutters. A tall boy with thick lips and a do-rag crossed near and muttered the word skunk into his ear but the number three came and Jesse jumped straight on it. He got off the bus where instructed in the text, crossed the road, found the three digit number and crunched along the driveway with a silver Audi on it. His client, Thurston, lived in a gold brick semi on a quiet Dulwich street lined with sticky lime trees. There were accessibility bars drilled into the walls either side of the black front door with its stained glass inserts. Jesse took a deep breath as he pressed the bell, lit in orange, which trilled high, and for a stupid second he panicked that he didn't have copies of the watch and awake with him, ready to present to the householder, and that he wasn't wearing a tie. Don't fuck this up, he thought to himself, mindful of the £18.33 he had left to his name, and hungry for that next gram of coke. The hallway light came on. They'd exchanged lots of messages on Gadar. Jesse had wanted to close the deal straight away, but Thurston slowed him down with his respectful tone. He was looking for someone to get to know and see for some periodic, safe and sensual attention.